Howdy, it's Mr. Pete again with part five of the clausing, uh, not rebuild, but uh, refurbishing a little bit here before I, I get it running and start to actually use it. But I, in the last episode, I took off the table and cleaned up the lead screw and things like that. But now I've decided that I'm going to take off the saddle. This is the saddle. It is pretty gunky, pretty dirty and I think deserving of a little attention. The first thing I think I'll do is probably clean up this surface with a rag and then take off the brass nut, remove all of the gib screws and uh, this plate off of the front, trying to keep track of all these parts as I go along this plate right here. And I think there's one on the back side. And I need to drop the gearbox off of here. Get it out of the way. I think there's two bowls here. Maybe it'll drop off. That's all that's to it. I'm not sure. I loosened the two cap screws that hold the nut on. I marked this so I can reassemble it the same way. And of course this is aligned with uh, two roll pins. Pretty dirty under there. And I'll take the table lock out. Maybe that's the same as the other one. I'm not sure if they'll interchange or not. No, that's quite a bit different from uh, the other one. Now to take the gearbox off. And I hope that this uh, drive shaft here will is telescoping and will come apart as I take the last bolt out, which is also the second bolt. And yes, it all came apart as I hoped it would. And that's just to set aside and clean. This is a little tricky. I had to take the handle off and then a couple bolts inside of this housing and it's held also by two roll pins which were pretty stubborn. I took out all of the gib screws. Uh, well, let's see, those are from the top side. I need to take the gib screws out from down here yet. I haven't done that yet to loosen it up. I took this plate off the front. Kind of dirty. That's aluminum. And this, this is a rubber gasket of some kind. And uh, let me take those gib screws out next. This little bearing keeper didn't really have to be separated, but I wanted to check that bearing out to see if it was as bad as the other one, but it doesn't appear to be. It's the same size as the other one. Anyway, at this point, what I need to do is to take this screw all the way out, and that's a left-hand thread. In order to get the saddle off of the dovetail, and uh, there's the gib, I could pull that out if I had an ocean. Uh, you see, it's not going to go any farther than this. Can you hear it go clunk? That's because the brass nut is uh, retaining it, so I have to drop that nut. In order to remove the brass nut, there is a set screw in this hole, so I have loosened that up. I don't know if that showed on it. Did you, did you see it drop? I'm not sure if that was in the camera frame. There. And there it is. And I already put a couple center punch marks on here, you can't see them, to indicate that that should be toward uh, me, the operator, the camera, but, but that's the cross feed nut, and that'd be a left hand thread as well, of course. So, now, I can slide the saddle off. And of course, I didn't need the center punch marks there, it's pretty darn obvious, that's where the set screw goes. Well, this saddle, right em cowboy should come right off now. I think I'll pull the gib out. Her nibs miss Georgia Gibbs. Now 
Now for a little cleanup. There and there, and I believe that's going to be the extent of the disassembly. I don't see any need to take the knee off at this time. There's quite a large quantity of chips in here, and of course that was caused by someone using an air gun, so I'll get even with them with my air gun and blow them out of there. So looking down into the bowels of the machine, I just blew it out pretty well, but it looks like I missed a few. There's some hardened grease that is holding chips, but I just want to make sure there, there are no chips in these bevel gears, and then they're just dry as a bone. I will put some uh, nice lithium grease on those gears before I close this up, but this is pretty well cleaned now, and uh, this is ready for a reassembly. I did have these wipers off and clean them real well and ready to go well it's the next day I have spent several hours cleaning all of these parts and uh, ran out of rags so I was forced to uh, get out the guest uh, sheets and cut them up into small usable pieces and they're nice and clean so uh, everything is oiled and ready to assemble so here's the saddle quite a bit of cleaning took place on this but it does look good very little wear. Some wear, yes, but not uh, objectionable. I like to lay all the parts out on uh, clean cloth after it's been cleaned up. So it's already been inspected and is ready to go. Now, something interesting to note on the gib screws, both, uh, well, this is where the table is, so that's the long gib. But we have uh, some gib screws that are dog-pointed and some straight ones. And the dog-pointed ones go into these deeper holes. That prevents the gib from sliding out, should the other ones be too loose. So we have one of these in each end, and then the, the other ones that do not have the dog point go in the, the shallower gib holes. And that, of course, fits in there like that and in this hole is the clamp, the table clamp uh, for the longitudinal feed for the x-axis and that locks the table by pushing on the gib. So let the reassembly begin. I'm not going to take the knee off but this has all been cleaned up real well and I did lubricate down here and I know that that oil passage is clean so it doesn't have to come off. It probably would be better if I did but one final clean up here. There must absolutely be no chips or debris. And then everything has to be lubricated. That wiper is already in place so I can screw it. I don't, do not have to fight it to get the, the saddle onto the dovetail. This has all been oiled.
And now to tighten up the saddle gibs. Neither too tight nor too loose, so they just need to be snug. And then uh, it's it's rather tedious, so I won't show all of that. But I, I like to tighten them one at a time and lock them, or just snug them, and move from one to another. Make sure that that the lock is loose until it has just the right feel, which comes, I'm afraid, by experience. I'm ready to put the wiper on right here, but before I do, I have to be absolutely positive the location of the brass nut. In other words, how far up or down is the brass nut? If it's pushed down too far there will be a bind and rapid wear on the screw. If it's too far up, same thing. So I did loosen it and then I took some trial movements back and forth to make sure there was no bind. That was done at the time I did this. I did not show a whole lot about adjusting these gibs because I'll, I'll really talk more about that when we get up here. So anyway, this set screw right here up against the brass nut can now be tightened. I'll put a wrench on that and tighten that off camera and then I'm ready to put the wiper on. Note that these two larger holes here are meant uh, to give you access to these Gitz oilers. One correction here, a long time ago when I talked about this arbor support, I think I said that it was mounted up here, but in fact these are the two tapped holes that are provided for uh, mounting the arbor support. Also I never have showed the parts book, but there's wonderful parts breakdowns covering all of this, but really nothing has said is said about taking it apart and uh, and putting it back together like I'm talking about now. They're talking more about lubrication instructions and wiring and things like that. So what I'm showing you here really is probably not written in any books, at least that I know of. Remember, you can never be too thin, or too well cleaned, or too well oiled. just like downtown. Ready for the gib. At the present time, the gib screws are only snug, just barely snug. I'm going to tighten them and adjust them, I should say, when I get the screw in. But you can see that I am able to slide the table, but with very little wiggle at the moment. All right, now I'll put the 
long screw in the, the table screw, which I've been calling the lead screw, which is, that might be the incorrect name, it's the, the table screw. Let's see how that works. And now for the screw, and I already oiled it. For now, I am forced to put the bad bearing back on simply because I want to get the machine to get together. But I have ordered one, lest you don't believe me. It'll be here in a day or two, so I will take this apart and do that. <laughs> but that's one more step. So I'll drive that bearing on, put the spacers on, and put the whole uh, end piece on. Remember, cast iron is very brittle. So alternate your tightening like that. Remember I'm pressing in at this time uh, the casting onto two roll pins as well as pressing it over the bearing all at once. I think I told you I did manage to lose one of the Woodruff keys but Luckily, I have a couple of assortments, so here we go, and that's a small one, Woodruff, Half Moon. Whoops. Help to put this on first. It sure is nice to have a lot of tools when you do a job like this. I'm just about done and it's been a long day. And there is no key that goes in that key slot. Before I adjust the Gibbs, which is really the last thing, I'm going to give this a good shot. And there's one right here, remember? Pretty hard to see. And there's one on the back side, which I will do. And uh, that's out of sight. All right. I've only snugged the, the Gibbs screws and the table feels pretty good. However, what I'm going to do now is snug them up and this is very similar to adjusting the tappets on my 54 Chevy. So we're screwing in the screw and we got a wrench of the appropriate size on the nut and I like to snug it in until it's just barely touches and then tighten the nut. Well I'm working my way from one end to the other and after I adjust each one then I stop for just a moment and move the table to see if there's a bind. But what's made this even more confusing here is that they use two different size nuts, 7 16 and half, and there's almost no clearance here so you certainly can't use a box end wrench so I'm trying to use the smallest and most delicate wrenches that I have and All right, I'll work my way down. No sense showing you all of that. It's very important that you do not get the gib too tight because it will cause wear and it'll aggravate you as you use the machine. So that feels just about right. And I travel all the way from one end to the other and we know it's clean and well oiled. So I'm done with adjusting the gib on the table. And now I'm gonna put the, the table lock on. And I think you noticed before that I had the wrong one down below. So this is the one. But the one down below has extra reach. And again, a table lock does nothing more than push on the gib. 
always make sure your table locks are backed off because that causes excessive wear. Now I think I'll repeat the same test that I, uh, I did at the very beginning of the video where I put the dial indicator on the end of the table here and moved it back and forth. Now I'll zoom in so you can see that but there's very little deflection now but there's probably always going to be some. Now if you have other brands of milling machines besides the clausing, a lot of what I have shown you is similar because most milling machines are built along a similar line with a knee and a saddle and a table and always with dovetails so what I've shown you here will apply to almost any machine that uh, you might run across. Let me zoom in on that indicator. And now zoomed in on the Mitotoyo here you can see that by putting just a reasonable amount of pressure on the table that there isn't much deflection. I'm, I'm just in the what two thousandth range or so if I push real hard. Remember this is a small milling machine that's a relatively light and you saw how narrow the uh, dovetail is right here so that contributes to the fact that it may lack a little bit of rigidity by its very design. Well that completes part four of the closing series. I hope you liked it and that's as far as I'm going to take this business of cleaning this up and uh, adjusting it and so on. So it's pretty much ready to use. However, in the next video or two, I will cover things like uh, lubrication of the machine and the controls of the machine. And then it's pretty much ready to actually put to use. So thank you for watching this part four. Be sure and watch the previous three and the following one or two. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.